again. Joffrey did one excellent save, the free kick taken earlier on. Arcavallo. Yes, Fish with a back header. Off the post. Kingsley came off the list. Left on it. Williams got in there. The pressure paid off. These two towering men causing the initial damage by their height. And at last the win in a long, long time for this. Here's the first touch by Fish. Off the post by Tinkler. Flicks across there. And down went the header. They really ground that defense in. Now watch the arms going up. And there he is, Nelson Mandela. Oh, but have we seen him doing that now in these tournaments? I, I really must say it's, uh, it's almost as if he's a talent, but is it not? I made that 27 minutes gone. And South Africa leading by one goal to nil. forward beautiful tackle racing through that's a great chance that's it Williams. two goals in two minutes and this man remains remarkably calm the substitute has had a glorious finish It has put South Africa right out of sight. It's the kind of penetration they've lacked in the game. They found the defense flat. And the gamble of putting Williams on the field at a crucial time in the second half pays off in the most dramatic way. Welcome to today's episode of Shoot Online. Um, with us, we have two great men, Coach Clive Barker and Captain Neil Tovey, who were responsible for that great day 25 years ago at the FNB Stadium when we became African champions. So gentlemen, it's been 25 years uh, we were African champions. I think for a lot of us, we remember that semi-final, just before the final, Bafana Bafana, you going to play the greats of Ghana, uh, a team that had the great tenure boa in their side, um, and you had performed well going into that final. But that was your best performance. Um, take us back to that night when we beat Ghana before we went into the final. Well, Anthony Yabaris, um, you just mentioned him. Yeah. And um, I remember finding, to find out how Lu Lucas was. Um, and of course, um, I got a good bill of health prior to the tournament that he would, he would be okay. I, th I thought he might break down, but we took the calculated risk. And um, he said to me over the telephone, if I get the opportunity to play against your brother, um, I want to do the job on him. Yeah. And of course, outside the first time he touched the ball when he played your brother straight through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody was saying, oh, turn it up. But um, I think as players, I think that his performance, like that, when he turned uh, around um, and turned the whole situation that, that night around, um, and when it, they were really, really good and really classy, and the panache that they played with them, um, really fantastic all around, and they had that ability. And you don't just get that those type of results just because you're a nice guy; you get it because you're a good team. Need your memory of that match? 
Yeah, it it was kind of for us getting into that semi final. You know, the case of you know, this gone is a huge, but I think it was saying, okay, how can we worry about ourselves? What can we do? What is good at for ourselves? If you have to worry about the opposition for the total match, you're not going to get in sync with your own performance. So we knew, we said, well, what are we going to do as players? Sit down as players and say, what are we going to do as players to make it uncomfortable for them? Yes. Obviously, we knew their strengths, the Yabawas and all, you know, the, that their strengths where it came from. But, it, you know, as any team, you, you have to know, okay, what's going to make the opposition uncomfortable? And, and that was, was getting the into passing the quick combination plays and getting it in behind them. And, and yeah, sometimes, yes, it was a direct route <laughs> from the back at one stage when Lucas knocked the, the pass over. <laughs> um, and, and that was a crucial goal that Sean scored. Just after oh, half time, fabulous. Uh, you know, just to give us that little bit of comfortability, and uh, but it was more getting around. Yeah, we know how great they are, and they were a great team. But how, what can we do to make it uncomfortable for them? What don't they like? And that's certainly what we did. So, gents, we we beat Ghana as convincingly as as we did in that semi final. Um, it's like we've peaked. Was there any fears with you guys that this was it, we have played our final? Um, or did you think we can still get better? I'll answer that. But, uh, yeah, carry on, carry on. We, other than what Clive spoke about, the characters of the team, you've got to remember we had, we had a number of leaders in this team. It wasn't just me as a captain, you know, we had captains of uh, John Moiti, Pirates, and you know, so uh, Siswe and them at, at, at Sundowns, and so uh, Tucker and Alenik. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yes, a combination of the whole team, we didn't allow ourselves to get complacent. Yeah, you know, we were playing against a Tunisian team that, that was a total young team that, we, that had also gone into a tournament and, and progressed through the tournament far ahead of their expectations. Yes. They were planning for the Olympics. They had qualified for the Olympics that year. So they took a, they brought a completely young team. And we said, okay, well, let's not get complacent. We know where their strength was, the excessive pace uh, of, their, of their front two strikers. Um, and let's not get caught with our pants down in, in terms of of being complacent today. We've done all the hard work. And fortunately, when one person speaks like that, you, the team can get lost. But when you've got everybody thinking along the same lines, uh, then, it, then, then you could get no complacency in the team. Um, we knew it was a last hurdle. We knew where their strength lay. We knew that altitude would play a role late in the game. Um, that they could not they, 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 they were playing in Durban. Yes, yes. They had played their semi final in Durban. Um, and that they could not run like that for the whole ninety minutes. It would catch them at some time. Although we wanted to do it a lot earlier than what we wanted to than what we did. But at the same time we knew we just we had to be a little bit more cautious in the opening stanza. And then we knew that the quality would come through. The personality that I talk about is the quality of football and that personality. And I think when I look back over the, the time that I was with them, the, the person I think I would have felt I did uh, the worst part well, would have been John Waiti. And I think that John had, would have had the ability that night against France. I mean, at the, at the press conference afterwards, they said, who was that player in the middle of the park and how old is he? And I said, that's John Moetti and he's the middle of the park and he's this and that. But he's 30, 32, I think it was, or around about that. And of course, um, straight away, the, the clubs that were interested in asking about him, um, unfortunately, because of his age, right, yeah. uh, and it was a huge influence, but he was a fa fabulous player. He could dictate things caress things, keep the ball, slow it down, quicker, give it to doctor, give it to doctor, give it to shoes, let shoes do a little bit now. 
It's going too quickly. Put your foot on its shoes, keep it. And all that type of thing, you could talk to them through the, been on the bench just about and play the whole game for them and and uh, they, were fab they were fabulous and uh, what a team. And, uh, and coming on, to, adding on to that is the fact that what came off the bench was as equal as what was on the, on, on the pitch well, in, in its own right, you know. Um, if Cloud felt he needed to make a, a change or swap around the strike force, which had been doing well for a particular match, to bring him in. He's, he's going to come back to Dr. just now about uh, the Brazil setup, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but our training sessions were like that. You know, you can very well, the tournament gets looked at the performance on the field and the matches. But when we got into our training sessions, whoa, they were heated. Yeah. They were intense, which it should be. Yes. You know, obviously at the right intensity at the right moments. Mm. Obviously a day after the game yeah, we can yes, yeah. we can relax. But the other one other guys that hadn't played they were they were working extremely hard and and then when we got back into the second day and third day, the intensity was up again. Because you needed those players that weren't part of the starting eleven to to be not go and sulk. Yes. To be felt like a part of the team. And that was you know, extremely, the, the technical team did wonders in that regard. Yeah. To make them still feel part yeah. of the team yeah. yes. and not uh, alienated that it's only the starting 11 in each match, yeah. which changed by one or two, as you know, in each match. Yeah. But it's, uh, it, that is so important. And that's what I'm talking about now is that, 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 that when we talk about a team, we don't talk about starting 11, we talk about the combination of the 23 players, yeah. uh, 20 players. Yeah. Clive, uh, as a coach, as a technical team, uh, what's the pre-match team talk like for a game of such such magnitude, an African Cup of Nations final? Generally, generally all round, it was just a, a build-up without putting them under any more pressure because they didn't need that. Uh, they needed later just to to put somebody's hand around them rather and, and go the other way. So I just think now that we had, we had got that far and we weren't going to blow it. And, uh, I was pretty confident with Nelson Mandela there, um, always coming in to say the right things at the right time and uh, absolutely fabulous person. Uh, and really the 13th or 12th man, as they call it in rugby and football, um, no, they were, they were on the way to, to win that final. They weren't going to get beat. And Nelson Mandela was a huge factor. Yeah, like his, his calls came in regularly, you know. He's president of the country and he's so busy, but he could always get a phone call, you know. Always get a call through to the room and, you know, uh, obviously the first couple of them, you think, oh, okay, because it's obviously a secretary would, would phone through first and then, and then say, no, the president wants to speak to you. And then, but eventually it, it became quite a regularity, yeah, you know, yeah. his regular calls came through, keeping, also from him, and as Clive said, he, he made sensible comments, you know, to to say, look, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves as well. Let's enjoy what we're doing. You're doing wonderful things for the country. Uh, you're uniting the country. And so he made all the sensible comments that you want to hear. You without know, the extra pressure. Without the extra pressures, you know, to say that, you know, what you guys have done already is so remarkable. So just just go out and and complete complete what you have to complete. And, yeah. uh, and so always had the right things to say at the right time, which was special. For, for you, Neil, um, as the leader of the team, what, what do you do on a day as big as this one? I mean, it's the biggest match of your careers. Yeah, it was a f just to settle the guys down as early as you can. You know, um, keep reminding them first touches, first passes, even a simple, a simple pass is a good touch is a good pass, you know, and, and, and stick to what we are good at. Let's do what we can uh, and, and, and settle down, get everybody on the ball early, you know, and, and, and when the ball's out of play or his treatment of a player, just get in and around and, and just keep the guys focused on, on what they had to do. Identify areas that might have been concerning us and that, like I said, the opening stands and they were trying to play those balls into the space over the top for their strikers. So Lucas and I we, we, and Fisher, we had a little discussion to, 
you know, uh, just instead of being so pushing up and playing off, so let's just back off five, five, ten meters a little, or five, six, seven meters, lessen the space in behind us a little bit, you know, and uh, so little things that that we as players had to also understand what we were about, mm. and, and to understand that in, in finals, if you defend well, you've always got a chance. Yeah. You've always got a chance. With our team, we always had a chance. Mm. Always had people that could change a game and, and do something remarkable uh, to, to get us going again. So, yeah, it was more about just looking each player in the eye, see what he was about. The guys that were a little bit nervous, you know, just give them a reassurance. Things like that. You know? So Clive, you, you are on the bench and the match goes on for as long as it did without us scoring a goal. What's going on through your mind? You get, you get a feeling about matches and, and that one, uh, I got the feeling after time, half time that we were getting on top and, um, and we just needed the first goal to break everything all down and we'd, we'd be on our way to win it. Um, and, and that's exactly what happened. We got better and better when we scored the first goal. And then of course came the second when Doctor picked up the ball and of course you know, let it go and uh, the keeper came and of course we scored and to go 2-0 up. And but, but before that, I mean, Mark is sitting on the bench. Um, oh, yeah, what drives Clive are you, to say? Are you Mark's agent? <laughs> What drives Clive to say it's time to make this change? You, know, you get a feeling, as I said, for the games, and it looked, well, I thought we had them on the back foot, and um, that we were going to try and finish it off. Um, so, now I think that um, everything went fallen into place like that, and I think they had given it their best shot, and uh, when they were coming back at us, and we just started to dominate and. And, and started to put the foot in the ball and, and do the right things at the right time. And then, of course, we got the, the two goals that counted. Williams will tell you a different story. Yeah. How he tripped Clive yeah. up. <laughs> and now he's telling the fans to go free Willy, free Willy. So, yeah, that's, 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 yeah, yeah. So, Mark Williams comes on and scores those goals. What's Neil Tovey feeling and thinking? No, once, like Clive said, once the first goal in the sims comes on, then, then it's a case of, okay, everybody was celebrating down that side. I wasn't thinking about that side of the play. I was thinking, okay, now, defensively, as a, as a unit, and then talking to Tinkler and to, and to Linda, uh, how are we going to really now lock the spaces where we need, you know, just in front of us, uh, and tighten the spaces up now, and, and and so they were all thinking, okay, well now let's let's how we celebrating the attacking guys thought processes, whereas there's Andre and the whole lot of us we are discussing, okay, now uh, it's not is 15 minutes or so to go, just over 15, how we can now limit limit the space and limit uh, the areas. Yeah, yeah. Mm. and and you did that. Um, yeah, they never had a real opportunity yeah, after that. Yeah. And then the final whistle comes. Uh, we win the African Cup of Nations. I remember I was in the crowd and we were all celebrating, hugging strangers. It was just an amazing day. Um, but how was it for you guys down there on the pitch? Um, just, just take us through what was happening with you guys. Yeah, we just wanted to run the clock down. And I remember going a couple of days later down to Cape Town. And there were four bowlers there, and um, they said to me, oh, I'm glad to see you're a Christian. And I said, yes, I am. <laughs> um, and she said, because every time you were looking up, you were looking up to pray. <laughs> and I said, I'd like to tell you the truth, but that was where the, the clock was. The scoreboard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. It down. Mm. You know, you, you, at that stage too, now there's, there's huge emotions, you know. Uh, you actually, you feel a sense of drain. You drain because the intensity of the concentration is so immense that oh, okay, there's relief now, and and, and your body felt drained. And and I was in in a, in, a, in a terrible situation. I could say terrible at the end of the match. You know, obviously after all the celebration was wonderful, great, but I was asked. 
to, to go and give a urine, uh, a urine, yes. urine sample. Because as you know, throughout yeah. the tournament they chose yes. three, three names, yeah. three numbers, and it had to be me, one of them. Yeah. And you think I could win? <laughs> I couldn't win. <laughs> and now they, the rest of the team's in the change room. Yeah. They're celebrating and, yeah. and everything's going on. I'm in, I'm in the area with the medic, the yeah. medical area, to try and, and give a, eventually, yeah. eventually, out. yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, uh, so, I, I think I came down 45 minutes yeah, later yeah, right. and everything had calmed down. And yeah, it's done. It's uh, time uh, you got fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I came 45 minutes and everything had calmed down, so I missed the, missed the, 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 the real after the, the change. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, obviously yeah. on the field, yes, I got, you got that, but, but the president and that, but because the change room was mayhem. Yeah, yeah. It was mayhem in the change room, so. But anyway. That's a fabulous feeling. Yeah. It must have been. We haven't had that in 25 years. I mean, when you guys look back and look at what's happening now, why do you think we haven't had that success? Because they haven't got the right coach. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. No, it's not at all. Like, they're all falling into place. Yeah. But I think everybody has learned so how difficult it was to win mm. the African Cup of Nations and um, how, how we went forward from there. There were good times in South African football after that, but uh, and different ones also. But, but absolutely, uh, that that night, um, Africa belonged to South Africa. It was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, the reason I often get asked that, and obviously once uh, one big aspect, the quality of the players. Not to say there's no quality of players nowadays. There is, but what we alluded to earlier, the mentality of the players. These quality players today, these really remarkable players that came after us, mm. Benny McCarthy's and, and everybody, um, Steve Pinar's, Stephen Pinar's and, and that. So there's been really some really fantastic teams that have come after us. Mm. But, but I think it's a combination of the mentality of the players mm. that, 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 that got us through, you know, and and I've mentioned, you know, the individuality of some players and things like that and the capabilities, mental capabilities. So, and also, as an association, I think we also lost the plot for, for a little while after that. We probably think, thought that it could continue without raising our game as well, yeah. from a country's perspective. Um, you know, just after that, the, the PSL came in and really raised the ball with their, their foresight uh, of, of the league. And we needed to do it as an association as well. We did it to certain areas and in, in, in the World Cup, which was a wonderful experience and, and, and a couple of years after that, 14 years later. And so we had that, had that ability. But I think it was just a thinking, okay, that's the same con conveyor belt will, will happen. The same capability, uh, player capability will come through. And so we just missed the boat for a, uh, a decade or a little bit longer than that, you know. So, yeah, but that happens, you know. But then at the same time, this, that competition is, is, is tough. It's, it's, it's one of the toughest competitions in the world. So, so how do you two feel to have been coach and captain who brought that AFCON title here at home? I mean, now when people think Neil Tovey and Clive Barker, the first thing that comes to mind is Nations Cup champions. It's what defines you guys now. Look, from our perspective, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, I'll live with it for the rest of my life. And we'll always be known as a class of 96. Yes. Uh, not through our own doing. It's only because it hasn't been the same achievement. I suppose it is. Uh, so, but we've got to live with it. We, 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 we are unique. We were a unique bunch and we are a unique bunch. And that's how it is. We, we, we determine history, but the continuation of that history gets determined by others not by us and 
So we could only do what we had to do. And, and we were fortunate and lucky and, and to be at the right place at the right time, um, together with our talent. The right players, the right, the right players, the right, you know, the right emotions, the right what was needed. So it all fell into place wonderfully well. Uh, what can you say? 25 years on in life? Yes, it's been gone too quickly. Yeah. Uh, it was fantastic that we had such a good quality of player, um, people, great personalities, um, the ones that have had gone and are no longer with us. Uh, but they were really fantastic. All. They answered every question whenever they ever had to. And outside of the debacle when I messed up the Brazil match, um, well, Doctor did. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was absolutely uh, fabulous because we dictated the, against the best side in the world. And I'd like to think this, this might have happened um, is that. On, every, on that given night against Ghana and later on uh, that, that half against Brazil, um, it was it showed exactly how far South African football had come. And I think they had jumped from about um, in, the, in the bottom 80s, 90s. You got them all up to about 13th, I think, in the end. But they really made changes and it was only because of the, the technical staff that we had back ourselves, uh, the quality of player and the captain of course plays a huge role. Neil always uh, played for me when he was a baby and then went further on and he really answered the questions and has been a great advert for our football. I'm still a baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Neil, in, in your book you speak of just that tinge of regret about you having swapped your jersey. You know, emotions at that time, you, you sometimes, is there's, there's any regret, I don't have regrets in my life, I'm being very privileged and fortunate, mm. but if I ever had a change, uh, it was not to swap that jersey, yeah. you know. Um, years after that, the national team got three or four jerseys for every game and, you know, mm. and that you could change and swap things out and, you know, and still have that jersey for the... But it also makes it unique, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, what's a South African captain wearing a Tunisian shirt for, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, thought differently, that's where we needed managers. Glenn wasn't thinking on the day <laughs> to come and say, hey Neil, yeah, yeah, this yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. take this one or take another from one. From you know? yes, yes. So I'm blaming Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was just emotions on, on yeah. thinking that, you know. Yeah. But yeah, if you ask me again, I've never done it. Yeah. Now, thank you so much, gentlemen. It's, uh, pleasure. You, you remain South African heroes for forever. And thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.